bedlam in Dnipro. The side of this apartment suddenly half its height. See this man scaling a collapsing building to rescue a resident. Others stagger through jagged slabs of concrete and metal. What was once home, now just raw matter. And so much more lost still. And near Kiev, a warning big enough to stand in. It's the clambering for firm footing that could prove tricky for the Ukrainian military if the Russians are switching tactics as an advisor to President Zelensky has mooted. This is a ballistic missile in bits. It's a weapon that can't be identified or shot down by Ukraine. And the specific trajectory of this one meant it blasted to the ground with no warning. Was there an air raid alarm, asks the reporter. No, there was none. There was no alarm and we didn't expect it. This week, Russian General Valery Gerasimov was appointed to lead the offensive. Some say this is him making his mark. There have been airstrikes across the country today, as well as a promise from the UK to send more backup. In a phone call this morning, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said he'd send tanks and additional artillery equipment. President Zelensky shared his thanks on Twitter. The decisions will not only strengthen us on the battlefield, but also send the right signal to other partners. A nod to next week, perhaps. Western defence ministers will meet in Germany to discuss new support. Solidar crunches under their feet. The small salt mining town has been declared captured by Russia, and more specifically by the Wagner Group, a mercenary army. The victory here has been described as Pyrrhic, much lost for an area said to have little strategic significance. Okay. We've spoken to a Ukrainian soldier who was injured fighting there, an actor in his life before the war. He voiced the role Captain America for the Ukrainian version of the film. Там було важко, бо нас взяли у кільце, і вони переважали в чисельності, кількості. Вони як саранча лізли, як мухи, таргани. Away from the front line, children in Kyiv sing folk songs in their air raid shelter. A distraction for the time being. Well, earlier I spoke to Mikhail Kazyanov, a Russian opposition politician who was Vladimir Putin's first prime minister. I began by asking him about the significance of the UK's pledge to send Ukraine Challenger 2 battle tanks. I think it's very important and significant because just Great Britain again taking a leading position because just right now it's absolutely clear that uh, this year it should be crucial for all this war and that depends on the, on the support of the Western countries, Western leaders, military support, moral support, financial support. And I think just Britain made this decision, the leading other European countries and at the most important Americans too to make this decision right. to supply to supply Ukraine with the uh, offensive uh, military hard uh, uh, tanks so that they could start their their victory to, and to, to, to end this uh, during this year. There seems to be a pattern here that the Ukrainians ask for something, the Western allies say no, then maybe, then they finally send it a few months later. If they had sent this stuff, you know, back in the autumn, would Ukraine now be in a much stronger position? Uh, I think just uh, we see just the, the gradual change of all the Western positions during all those months of this war. And uh, just the brave, uh, I would say, uh, absolutely unexpected, uh, I would say, fight or fight of resilience, resilience of, of Ukrainians demonstrated they could fight and they could win. And that's why just, I think the solidarity is in place. I think that is uh, right now people understand that this year, this new year, that is a crucial one to, to end the war. And yet the Russians have also clocked up a success, haven't they, with the occupation of Solidar, that salt mining town. And um, how significant is that, especially morally, 
for Vladimir Putin after some pretty dismal months. I think only morally. Mr. Putin was disappointed with the results uh, his general brought to him. They, they couldn't bring, bring anything. And he accepted the proposal of his friend, his personal cooker, who simultaneously was the owner of so-called illegal military group, just uh, mercenaries, mm. Mr. Prigozhin. And Mr. Prigozhin promised to him to have some kind of achievement so that Mr. Putin could be satisfied and could, could announce some kind of victory. How strong or how weak is Mr. Putin's position at home now, both you know, compared to the army and the FSB, but also the general population? That's a very important question. The most important question right now. You see, just formally, Mr. Putin ends his presidential term in one year time. And in fact, just announcement of his participation in new elections should be made, say, in October and coming fall. And, and in fact, right now, just they have all, they have um, the just few months, nine months, eight months for, for to achieve victory. Victory for Mr. Putin could be just to keep the positions, uh, land position he has now. Crimea, part of Donbass, and land corridor between them. That's important for Mr. Putin. And for Ukraine, of course, the most important thing, just to destroy this corridor. Mm. If he loses more territories compared with today's position, he will not be able to announce the victory. It means that for him it will be difficult to say i'm going to new elections which is of course not an election but at least it will be announced this way or just hit to disappear and mr putin would be seen as defeated and the regime change will start and do you think that we are likely to see another mass mobilization by mr putin of his fighting men i think i think it definitely will be the case Right now, they could intensify it in a, in, a, in a few weeks so that to prepare their offensive operation mm. for, for spring. I think Ukrainians should start it earlier. They already have some kind of capability to do this. Mikhail Kazyanov, thank you very much indeed.